God is just stirring in your sons and daughters even in this hour. Oh, there is such a cry, there is such a longing, God, for the Spirit of God to be poured out once again on this nation, oh God. God, you hear, you see the cries and the longing of the generations, God, that have been laboring. But God, we trust in your timing. We trust that even that that moment is coming, God. And God, right now, as your sons and daughters, we co-labor with you, our Father. We co-labor with you, God. God, we say we want to be aligned to your heart, oh God. Oh, there's such a stirring in your sons and daughters in this hour for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we would see the fullness of this once again in our land, oh God. Oh, Abba Father, we've been waiting. But we know that God, even more, Abba Father, you have been waiting. You have been waiting to make your bride. You have been ready to make your church. You've been waiting to make your sons and daughters ready. Oh God, we say, make us ready. Make us ready to be that clean, fine vessels, fit for the Master's use, oh God. Oh Lord, we see the longing, the desire, oh God. And so even tonight, we're saying we want to heal where we have not yielded in certain parts of our lives, God. We want to come into another level of yieldedness. We want to come into another level of surrender, oh God so that we can be ready, we can be made ready for your purposes, oh God, for your kingdom to come even on this nation in this hour, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our Father. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's just my joy just once again to welcome you to this MUFW 24 hour prayer order. If you had just joined us, um, yeah, just welcome, welcome to this time that we have. And even as we have a special speaker, someone that I'm sure all of you are not unfamiliar with is Pastor Julius Subi. He has been in our nation many times before sent by the Lord to, to give a message to the church to raise up even prayer in this nation and we are so grateful for him and we are so grateful that he's here tonight even to share another word from the Lord even for this season for this nation so can you join me in just welcoming him say hi to him on the chat put up your emojis to say hi Pastor Julius Subi we are so grateful for you Father would you use Pastor Julius Subi to speak a word Father I pray that this word would not return to you void, O oh God, that it would be sent forth to accomplish your purposes even in this hour, O oh God. So we commit him to you, anoint his lips, and may our hearts be fertile, soil, fertile ground for your word, O oh God, even this evening. Father, we thank you for this time. We commit it this time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Julia Subi. Yes, praise the Lord, wonderful family in Malaysia. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm so glad to have this opportunity uh, to share with you the word of God today. And I want to thank uh, uh, Pastor Lee Chu and Pastor Chu for the wonderful work that you're doing in Malaysia, uh, Leverant Tio Quicking. Uh, all the pastors, the men and women of God, the intercessors who are on the Malaysian uh, prayer wall, uh, you know, the firewall, you are doing an amazing work. We follow, I follow your programs and we always keep you in prayer because we know that you are preparing your nation for a mighty visitation, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I bring you our greetings from this blessed country of Kenya, Nairobi. Incidentally, today we had a Malaysian pastor sharing with us all the way from uh, the desert streams, Anglican Church in Sabah, uh, Leverand Tien, and uh, he shared so powerfully. He's been with us for the last three days. 
and here I am again also uh, blessing uh, uh, the brothers and sisters in Malaysia. Okay, I want to uh, go to, uh, you know, the word of God and um, I'm going to be sharing my message uh, basically in two, uh, two dimensions. Uh, the first one, I'm going to talk a little bit on uh, the things that happen when revival comes. And of course, that is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the fresh fire that, uh, you know, we are going to be praying for. And I believe that God is going to uh, release a stirring in the hearts of people, uh, uh, baptize people uh, with the Holy Ghost to speak in, uh, in new tongues. And also, the Lord is going to heal people and deliver them from affliction. So, I want us to... Uh, Go to the book of, uh, you know, Isaiah chapter 64, uh, verse 1 to verse 4. The Bible says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil. To make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou comest down, the mountains flowed at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, Neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. Holy Spirit, I, I thank you for this wonderful time that you have given me to share. I pray that you use my mouth as the pen of a ready writer to write what is in your heart into the hearts of your people. I cover the entire atmosphere with the precious blood of Jesus. And I pray for continuous open heavens and the quickening of the Holy Ghost. Touch your people, those in their houses, wherever they are. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen and amen. Now, uh, about four years ago, the Lord uh, did speak to me uh, to go around the nation of Kenya. And he told me to prepare the nation for the outpouring. Or the nation for the revival that is coming. And of course, I have uh, had many prophetic words concerning uh, Kenya as one of the nations that God is going to use as a springboard of revival. I have had powerful prophetic words over the nation of Malaysia uh, of a major powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is going to break out in your nation. I have had that in the U.S. I was in Russia. I had the same thing. Uh, according to what we are hearing, it does appear that every nation has a promise. It has a promise of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is coming. In fact, some nations, uh, people are saying the outpouring is going to begin in our nation. Singaporeans are saying it is beginning there. Indonesians are saying it is beginning there. Uh, Filipinos are saying it is beginning there. In China, they are also saying. In Africa, we are also saying the same thing. What does it mean? What it means is that this revival is going to be a global revival. But it is going to have different flavors. Different flavors. It's a, a, Because that is... Uh, the sound that is in the heart of God for the nations right now, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in order to stop the global disaster and in order to uh, catalyze, catalyze, catalyze uh, the, the, the purposes of God. You know, when you spend time, uh, when you spend time in the presence of God, I, 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 I've taken days, I've taken weeks just to 
try and listen to the heartbeat of God in, in, in prayer, for, you know, for, uh, especially during the season of COVID. It is revival. That's what the Lord is saying. But the Lord spoke to me a word that actually uh, really did prick my heart and uh, it shook me. It excited me, but it also shook me. The Lord said that the revival, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is going to come is going to be according to the way that the priesthood in that nation has prepared their nation for the outpouring. You know, uh, it is uh, the, the, the whole mandate has been put on the priesthood. We are the ones who are going to determine. Two things are going to be happening in this end time at the same time. Certain nations are going to be experiencing an increase of the presence of God and a move of the Holy Spirit with uh, miracles, signs, and wonders taking place, while other nations are going to be experiencing the opposite. They will be experiencing an increase of darkness, hopelessness, uh, you know, uh, taking place in society, depending on the priesthood. Now, the priesthood, uh, it, it, the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to move in different dimensions. In certain nations, there is going to be a move of God that is going to take place, but that move will not be so powerful. Depending on the depth, the depth, that the priesthood, the, the people in that nation have taken their people, have taken their church, uh, 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 either on a personal or, or corporate level, in the waters of the Spirit. Because we know that, according to Ezekiel chapter 47, there are, are dimensions, there are, are levels. So it is according to the depth. Certain nations may experience a move of the Holy Spirit and it may, it may be a turn of, of holiness. People just turning to holiness, turning to holiness, turning to holiness, purity, holiness, purity, holiness, purity. While others will have the purity, the holiness, but they will also have the manifestation, powerful manifestation of the acts of God, miracles, signs, and wonders taking place, you know, blind eyes and so on. So it is according to the depth. There is no visitation where there is no preparation. And so uh, I began the journey. We began the journey. And I'll be sharing a little bit uh, more about that. But uh, going back to the scriptures that we just read, you know, uh, the, I find Isaiah chapter 64 to be one of the very, very, very powerful chapters on revival and I want to encourage you to take time to just study it. The, the, the prophet is, uh, is crying out. And, uh, and uh, uh, this prophetic ministry is very much required. Uh, and I thank God for, for the, the activation that is taking place in Malaysia. Uh, various initiatives, prayer initiatives. Uh, the, the Malaysian uh, you know, firewall being one of them. Uh, because that is a part of that is the prophetic insight to know what do we ought to do at this time. So Isaiah is crying out and is saying, oh, that Lord, you may rend the heavens that thou wouldest to come down that the mountains might do what? Might flow at thy presence. What happens? This, what he's actually explaining to us here is an atmosphere of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God rending the heavens. What kind of heavens is he rending? He's not rending the good heavens. He's rending the veils that he speaks about in Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 7. Those veils that are over nations that have been allowed to be there because of the demonic are altars. Of course, different nations have different spiritual atmospheres, uh, you know, uh, depending on how powerful, how strong the altars that have been raised up on the land are. So, uh, when, the, when the outpouring comes, point number one, 
the heavens open over a territory. Heavens open over a territory. And this open heavens melt the forces of darkness that are keeping people in captivity and in bondage. This is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And secondly, mountains melt by this outpouring. And I believe that mountains are going to be melting even tonight because there is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is going to be coming up, you know, be pouring upon your life, even as, uh, as I share the word of God. He says that, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And of course, he's not talking about hills, but he's talking about mountains. Now, we know that mountains are higher than hills. The Lord is speaking about the impossibilities. Now, it must be noted that when God visits a nation, he's not only visiting a nation, but the Lord is also visiting individual lives, is visiting people, is visiting people's uh, issues, you know, uh, uh, mountains that they are facing as individuals. Because a nation basically is made up of what? Is made up of people. Now, in Kenya, we had a mountain. We had a mountain that has troubled us. And this mountain was a mountain of drought. We have had the worst drought in the last 40 years. You know, we lost lives. We lost wild animals. We lost many elephants. You know that in our nation, wild animals bring in a lot of money. People come from all over the world to come and see animals. And if you're on this, uh, you, you, you are here and you have never come to Kenya, I always welcome you to come to Kenya so that you can see the elephants and so on. But the thing is, we lost many. We also lost um, uh, many domestic animals. Please, can you play for me? Um, uh, okay, j just let, let me just continue to speak and then. And so the nation was experiencing a, a major mountain of drought. And... Uh, uh, government was now trying to import food from the U.S. and all that kind of thing. A lot of challenges. The president did not even know what to do. One day, I went to, I always pray uh, with the first lady of the nation of Kenya, the wife of the president. Uh, the Lord opened that door for me. I've been going there and teaching government officials how to pray, how to seek the Lord and that kind of thing. So one day we were praying at three o'clock. We were carrying out the three o'clock watch at the government uh, buildings. We have an altar there. And when we were praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the cause of the drought. And it took me to the story of David uh, when uh, there was a successive drought for three years because of the blood of the Gibeonites that, they, uh, that Saul had poured. And so I shared with, uh, with, with the first lady, and uh, she said, this message needs to go out to the president immediately. And so uh, he, she organized and we went out to the president. We met the president and I shared with the president of the country what the Lord had spoken. And the president asked me, what do you want me to do? And I told him, you need to call for a national solemn assembly. And... Uh, he said, I'm willing to do anything. If this is going to change to, you know, to, to, to get our nation out of drought, then I'm willing to do it. And the Lord spoke to me about the Solemn Assembly. We have been organizing Solemn Assemblies for a very long time. But the Lord told me, organize the Solemn Assembly according to the biblical patterns, something that we had never done before. And what were those biblical patterns? Uh, there had to be fasting taking place for seven days, and then the solemn assembly had to be done on the eighth day. You know, initially we just did. So uh, very quickly, we began the fasting, and in about seven days, we mobilized the whole nation. We have 47 counties in Kenya, and people came from all over the nation, our representatives, and we had about 12,000 people. Uh, please put on that clip. Um. Kenya has been experiencing some of the worst drought conditions 
over the last couple of months, causing crop failure, loss of livestock, wildlife and biodiversity, and malnutrition. With the prospect of a sixth consecutive failed rainy season in the East and the Horn of Africa, there was need for prompt action to bring forth a solution. On the 14th day of February 2023, Kenya's President, His Excellency William Samoy Ruto, in conjunction with church clergy, organized a national day of mass prayer and fasting dubbed the Solemn Assembly. Tuweze kuombea taifa letu hasa katika shida hii ya njaa na shida ya ukame. This was to raise prayer and petition to our God trusting that the heavens would finally open. We pray that the Church of Jesus Christ shall continue to stand strong and especially the clergy, the intercessors, so that this nation can move forward. Let's continue praying for this government. Let our national anthem, O oh God, begin to mean something. I ask that you bless this land, this our nation. May we dwell in unity, O oh God. God is going to release the natural resources that are in the land of Kenya. Kenya is going to be a fruitful land. Tupatia mvua katika jina la Yesu. Tupatia maji kutoka biguni tena baba. Today, today we are here. We are here at the national altar at the national altar to cry out to you to cry okay so i think um it's 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 ended somewhere there but the thing is this we held that uh, solemn assembly on the on the on the 14th of february at the national stadium and about two weeks after that rains began coming to kenya and uh Another two weeks after that, the entire nation experienced a baptism of rains. And up to now, it is still raining. And, uh, you know, uh, every place of Kenya where even rain had not visited that place for the last four years, there is a lot of rain that is coming down now. So what I'm saying is this. When we cry out to God and God opens the heavens and he comes down, the mountains will melt. Those are the things that happen when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit does come. And then thirdly, his name will be known to his adversaries. His name will be known to his adversaries. You know, we know that there are many adversaries, even in your nation, that do not believe in God. And they are not just going to believe by being preached to and being told about the gospel. People have become so indifferent. And that is the reason why we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that the adversaries can see the acts and the wonders of God. I can tell you that because of what happened right now in the Kenyan government, there are so many um, ministers in, in government who are Freemasonaries and we, you know, they practice witchcraft and society, they are now asking for prayer because now they see that the church is a solution. And of course, finally, I just want to finish that part, nations tremble at his presence. Nations tremble at his presence. In other words, they will be able because God's purpose is to touch an entire nation. And uh, I want to encourage you because you've been taking the journey of prayer, the journey of fasting for your beloved nation, Malaysia. The Lord is going to touch that nation. God does not just want to visit families and visit individuals. He's a God of nations. And so nations will tremble at, at, at his presence. But then when we go back, when we go back to that scriptures that we read, uh, I did not read the other part. Uh, we see that there is a problem that is making God not to rain the heavens and come down because Isaiah is crying, is wishing. But then 
the Holy Spirit answers and says this in um, in, in 64, Isaiah 64 and verse 7. You know, he says, There is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirred up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and has consumed us because of our iniquities. So, uh, the reason why the nation of Israel did get in uh, a state that we're going to be looking at, it was because people were not calling upon the name of the Lord. They were not praying. And so, he says that there is nobody that tires up himself. What does the stirring up ourselves means to wake up? It means to get out of sleep, become proactive, and do something. And, uh, you know, with all honesty, I want to, you know, to say that, you know, the, the, the church in Malaysia, you know, has to a certain extent waken up, you know. And, and, and by the way, when I speak like that, I, I, I'm not trying to say that for us in Kenya, we have already woken up so much. We are, because prayer has different dimensions, you know. Nobody spares himself, you know, to wake up and take hold of the Lord. And so, because of that, then God has hidden his face. And there are two reasons why God hides his face. Uh, one, God hides his face because of iniquities. You know, in other words, if we are talking about an outpouring, there has to be genuine repentance you know, humbling down ourselves, uh, especially to first of all deal with the idols of the heart because the whole move of God is going to begin in the church. I will be speaking about that self. But the thing is this, people of God, we must arise. We must arise. And that has been, you know, the sound that I have been uh, calling upon, you know, the church in Kenya and of course other servants of God. What kind of prayer, you know, is God asking us to pray that is going to rend the heavens and bring the revival? It is not just, it's not just about prayer. But what kind of prayer is the Lord requiring us? What kind of price is the Lord requiring us to pay? Because as I said before, God hides his face. Because of two reasons. One is iniquities, but two uh, is because he wants to draw us in the deeper waters of the spirit. So when we draw closer to him, it's like he moves back, you know, so that he can draw us in deep waters because of what? Because of uh, the move of the Holy Spirit that he wants to release. Because what God wants to release is extraordinary. Uh, Malaysia has experienced revivals in Barrio. I have been there in Taginambu, and there's the other name which I can't mention. I don't know, Paraparakan and something like that. I didn't get an opportunity to go there. But what the Lord wants to release is going to be far more powerful than what happened in those territories. You know, because the glory of the latter church is going to be greater. And so this is the reason why uh, the, the, the Lord is releasing a new baptism of prayer anointing, you know, a new baptism of prayer anointing. And I thought that I knew how to pray. I thought that, I, but the Lord spoke to me that there is a new wave of, of prayer anointing and, and the hunger that he's releasing upon his church in the nations to take them to very deep dimensions of prayer. And uh, this is why I'm speaking on a practical level, because I like to speak about the things that, you know, we are doing so that it doesn't just appear to be like, like theoretical messages. The Lord, uh, you know, spoke to me to, to do what? To lead people, to begin leading people in extraordinary sessions of prayer, praying for eight hours nonstop, praying for seven hours nonstop, you know, uh, praying for 10 hours nonstop. L yesterday, 
we did seven hours. We began at seven in the morning and we went all the way up to two o'clock in the afternoon. I think some of you were following the page. It is there. It is called Take the Bull by the Horn. Take the Bull by the Horn prayers. You know, because the, the Lord is baptizing people. He's drawing them in. There is something powerful that is about to be released, but it is not going to happen on our own terms. People of God, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost is not going to take place at our own terms. It is going to take place at the terms of God, the way of God. We must follow the patterns. We are the end time church. There is a great demand that the Lord is putting upon us. Upon us. And I can tell you, people came into that atmosphere and people, I, I have realized that people are hungry. People are hungry. When we began these prayer meetings, I didn't even think that many people would be coming for these prayer meetings. But these prayer meetings of praying for extended hours are the meetings now that people are yearning for. We had these meetings where, you know, we, we have different styles of meetings where people come, you teach, then you lead them in prayer, pray for 20 minutes, and then you talk for another 40 minutes. <laughs> And then, so when you look at it, you have prayed for two hours. You have prayed for two hours. It is a meeting of prayer for two hours, but the talking has actually taken place for uh, maybe 45 minutes. And then the singing has taken another, another maybe 20 minutes or something. And the real, real quality prayer that has been invested is been maybe just 30 minutes of prayer. We cannot do that and experience a powerful move of God. And uh, actually, the young people now have got to knit up. And for them, they are doing 10 hours. And doing what? They are basically praying in tongues. To do what? To stretch the capacity of the spiritual man. The days that are coming ahead are going to be very challenging days. You need to get extra oil to store in the lamp of your spirit that is going to come to the front when those days come. So. We must stir up. And Father, even right now, I pray for your people. I want to request you to just open your mouth and just pray with me. I believe that the spiritual realm is open and the Lord is releasing an anointing over your life. Lord, I just pray for that grace. I release that grace over my brothers and sisters. That grace of going for extended hours of seeking the Lord. Mashana, that hunger, supernatural hunger. Makose kebre kato zamani ya bakata la bazani ya bagari. Barosha makato zakuta la bazani ya bagari. Bareka bose kebre kando zamani ya bagani. Bakose kebre kato zamani ya bagari. Bare masana. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your hunger. That anointing of, uh, of, 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 of of seeking you. That anointing of, of hunger. The one that you said you are pouring it out in new dimensions upon your people. Lord, pour it on your people. This anointing is going to get hold of some people. You will pray for 12 straight hours without stopping. You will go for 18 hours without stopping. It will not be you. It is not you. It is the Holy Spirit that is doing a deeper work in your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Touch that lady. Touch that gentleman. Just give them that hunger. Give them that yearning. That grace that yearns for more of the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. So he goes on to say that, you know, but O oh Lord, thou art our father. That's verse eight. We are the clay and thou art our potter. We are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth very sore. O oh Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Verse 10, I love it. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. This is coming as a result of there being nobody to take hold of the Lord and stir up himself to seek the Lord. The city becomes a wilderness. 
you know, uh, w- what kind of wilderness? A spiritual wilderness where people and uh, you know are coming to church but they are not being revived people are not getting born again people are not getting transformed you know there is no presence we are having activities we are having programs but really lives are not being touched and they are not being transformed you know the cities are in a wilderness zion uh, is a wilderness then jerusalem a desolation so when people do not seek the lord then what happens is that um, uh, the, 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 the forces of darkness now get the liberty to come and destroy families, destroy marriages, destroy nations, destroy their economies, destroy lives through drug abuse and all that kind of thing. There is such a very strong battle upon our young people because the young people are part of the key that God is going to use in the end time revival. I can tell you a prayer meeting that has many young people. I have observed it. It has something. There is just something about, uh, you know, with God and the young people. And I thank God that, uh, you know, Pastor Lichu was telling me that uh, 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 the the next generation is running, is now beginning, you know, to to, to run even the Malaysian uh, uh, firewall. The next generation, that, that is a major, major, major key a major key, young people, you know. So he says that our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee. He's talking about the temple. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised thee is burned with fire, is burned with fire. And all our pleasant things are laid to west. You know, you can have beautiful churches. You can have beautiful seats. All those things are good. And we thank God for giving them to us. But is the presence of God moving in your house? The fire of lust, the fire of worldliness is burning up the pleasant houses. The the, the prophet is saying, uh, our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised thee has been burned with the fire. Because there is nobody that tires up himself to take hold of thee. I pray that you will stir up yourself. So that our beautiful churches, our beautiful homes where we are living, will not be burnt by the fire of lust, by the fire of wildliness, by the fire of the idols of the heart, you know, that quench the presence of God stirring up ourselves to take hold of the Lord, to take hold of the promises of God. Malaysia, you have many promises from the Lord. Okay, so how do we prepare? I said that because I see my time is really gone. Oh my goodness, this time is just running like what? You know, Malaysian clocks moves very fast. Take your time, Pastor Subi, take your time. (laughs) Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, 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 what? How do we? How do we prepare? Because as I told you, um, the Lord speak, spoke to me uh, to to move around the nation of Kenya and to go to the forty-seven counties. Beginning uh, tomorrow, we are going to be doing the tenth county. Uh, the intercessors have already gone. They have been there for three weeks. Point number one. We must have an agenda for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have to have an agenda. It must be an agenda. Uh, And how does this agenda come about? I have found it to come twofold. One, as we spend time in reading the word of God, there are certain questions that begin to arise in our spirit. I'm not talking about uh, if you, we, uh, the man that God used for the East African revival, Simon, it was reading. He was going through the Bible from cover to cover, page to page, page to page, page to page. And then certain questions began to come in his life. If God said, let us go and make disciples of nations, what is happening? Who is a disciple? 
what uh, you know in, in the church what i'm observing is that people are not disciples because the lifestyle that they are living what about the miracles that he spoke about how come we are not seeing these things when we take time to absorb ourselves in reading the word of god and we are not we, we give heed to what is in the scripture certain questions are going the holy spirit is going to begin triggering certain questions from scripture so uh the, the second thing is of of course to look at the prophetic words that god has spoken over the nation because god is always speaking using different prophetic voices we, we you know we have to see where we are coming from in order for us to know where we are going so to have an agenda for revival means that we must begin to carry out the spiritual transactions that cause revival to come and of course that includes i mean the, the reading of the word of god and of course the praying and the seeking of the lord there is a reason why we have been seeking him and he's not moving you know so uh and then also just preaching and speaking and sharing about this outpouring you know we have to begin so that it begins to form in the hearts of the people secondly obedience obedience is a major key as you are praying and as you're seeking the lord you must hear what is the holy spirit saying what are the instructions that the holy spirit is giving you know because uh god will give different inst instructions i was with pastor jessica kayanja the wife of uh, pastor kayanja they had one of the most powerful revivals that i have ever seen actually i i mean this revival I, you see I, I, we were just sharing the other day and we say that you know africa has a veil that needs to be broken i have seen this revival that has just broken out in uh, this university in america i'm forgetting the name of this university um uh, god is moving there a spirit of uh, especially you know repentance and you know that kind of conviction and it is all over all over the whole world you know we, we've known about this revival asked by yeah and we thank god for, for for what he's done there but what happened at the 77 days of glory at robert kanya's place because he invited me there to go and preach you know i i, I mean it is something i've never seen uh in my life because all the miracles that are stated in the book of acts happened there apart from one miracle that is uh you know uh, I, we didn't see somebody who had died coming back to life but it wasn't it wasn't shared i mean it didn't reach out so much to the entire world there is a there is a but pastor jessica shared with me something that really touched me how did it begin she had a dream and in this dream women were coming to the church their church is in kind of a valley many multitudes of women and then in the dream she began to saw to see women getting out of uh, out of wheelchairs and the people were brought on mat mattresses and they were healed and the lord spoke to her yeah? the lord spoke to her to begin a prayer meeting for for ladies uh because they and this prayer meeting basically they were not even praying for the nation they were focusing on praying for family problems because many marriages were having a lot of challenges uh there were many beautiful sisters in africa uh, getting married is very very important in the church that had reached the age of getting married and they were not getting married and they were you know th those kind of so, so she called people not to pray for the nation but to pray for the family but as they cry because god is a god of families as they cried because again also to get people to pray the holy spirit is very strategic he will always give us a rallying point you know like you finished the elections elections was a, a rallying point that caused many people in malaysia even in kenya to arise up and, and, and pray but the thing is this uh so she obeyed and she called for that meeting and, and, and listen 
it brought a lot of controversy because she told me it caused a lot of controversy in the church. Because when she told them that the Lord has spoken to her every Saturday, there is going to be a prayer meeting from seven in the morning, the whole day up to four. Ha! The administrators of the church said that one cannot work administratively because first of all, we have weddings. Weddings must take place and they take place on Saturdays. What are we going to do about the weddings? And she said, for me, God spoke to me. So about the other things, I don't know, but I must obey what God told me to do. And she obeyed. So, uh, you know, in fact, God had to use a young boy who was about, I think, 19 years, who said that God has spoken. Let us follow the instruction. The rest of the other things, God will handle them. And they began the prayer, which went for about eight months. Can you imagine? Every Saturday from seven in the morning to four, women were coming there. They were praying. They were seeking God. And the numbers were just increasing and increasing and increasing. And God began to do miracles. <laughs> One of the, the miracles that she shared, which was actually a wonder, she said that uh, a certain lady who was part of that, the people that used to come to pray, did what? Uh, she had, had her sister whom she had raised up and the sister slept with the husband and the husband, uh, she, she became pregnant. And uh, this woman came to that prayer meeting crying. Her little sister has betrayed her. Now she has become the younger wife of the husband. And so uh, Pastor Jessica stood in that meeting and said that pregnancy will not continue. That child will go back where he came from and he will come back in the right context. And, you know, this girl is already pregnant. Uh, the pregnancy continues growing and growing and growing up to the seventh month. She wakes up one morning and the pregnancy is not there. They go to the doctors and the doctors say, we cannot see a pregnancy. They went to another scan and the doctors said, you have never been pregnant. Because if you were pregnant and you had lost the womb, uh, you know, you had lost the child, you are, you are, you are, you are, your, your stomach or your womb should be soft. Anyway, Dr. You know, uh, Chu is here. He's uh, a gynecologist. He knows more about that. And so it caused a lot of controversy. Where did the, the child go that was in the womb for 70 months? The man even came to church. It caused a lot of commotion there. But anyway, to cut the long story short, the man and the wife finally were restored back and the woman got pregnant and delivered a child. They had five children. They got the sixth child. So it, it appears God took back the child and brought back the child in the right context in the marriage. Isn't that a wonder? You know, but what I'm saying is the power of obedience. You know, um, uh, many, many times uh, God gives us instructions and then we, we can't carry out those instructions because we are reasoning. The Lord spoke to me to begin uh, going to the counties, revive Kenya now, to, be, uh, to begin that ministry of revive Kenya now. Every meeting was to cost us $20,000. We didn't have the money. I remember we went for the first meeting. I think we had about $1,500 and we began the meeting. But, you know, because I obeyed, and the Lord for us spoke to us specifically, as you go to the counties to prepare Kenya for revival, deal with the healing of the land. Deal with the issues of healing of the land. Deal with the iniquities of the land. You know? And uh, there are many testimonies that have happened uh, in the different counties where we have gone of how churches that were in slumber, churches that were asleep, have been reawakened in their prayer lives. And now they have begun carrying out uh, open air meetings and crusades and people are getting born again. Not only that, as a result of the healing of the land transactions, minerals are being discovered in the counties where we have been going. And now uh, the, 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 the people in government have seen that these meetings have really, uh, they are becoming so much of a blessing uh, they, they are now going to help us to sponsor the next meeting that we are going uh, tomorrow. 
you know, we have an expecting is that the, the president wants to come and at, uh, attend that meeting. What I'm saying is this, people of God, we need to obey the instructions that the Lord is giving us. And then we shall see a move of God taking place in our land. And maybe, can you just show some of the photos of uh, those meetings that we have been having? Or you can show, yes, 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 yes. Uh, if you can get it, if you can't get it quickly, it is all right. Uh, I want to continue and then finish. Thirdly, uh, of course, repentance and humility, you know, and of course that is uh, on personal level, you know, on personal level and even on family level. People need to forgive each other. Uh, for the issues that are happening, that are blocking the move of the Holy Spirit from taking place. The, the, those are some of the, the, the meetings. So, you know, now, these um, uh, meetings have grown so big that even the tents that we've been using, uh, they could not be able to hold the numbers. You know, And the spirit of repentance, salvation of souls, people coming to the Lord. Actually, on that day, there were like, more people standing outside than the people that were standing in because they were spread all over and it was drizzling. It was raining. It was cold, but people were standing there and uh, people have been tired up to arise in prayer. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing that has really happened because we, we do meetings with the pastors, there has been forgiveness, repentance, you know, and relationships have been restored which had been broken before. And so pastors are sending us messages and they are saying our relationships are now become better. Our unity, relational unity is now become better after you came and held the meeting and we prayed together and that kind of thing. Because people of God, no matter how much we are going to pray, if we do it with pride, we cannot see a move of God. If we think that we're going to use our strategies, we cannot see a move of God. We have to humble ourselves before the presence of God. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. You know, God is the one who knows how to do it. And as the scripture says, when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will come and heal the land now the, the the other thing of course is the unity of the believers the oneness and uh i i i, I came to realize that when repentance takes place people come together we are going to this county called baringo and now 60 counties are sending their bishops and their pastors to come and be part of it you know come and be Part of it because uh, we cannot go there with the pride and I don't know, beating chests and, and, and doing what. We have to humble ourselves to serve the people of God and uh, share the message on oneness. But I've realized that oneness cannot take place until God does a deep work in our hearts. I'm not saying we are there yet, but I can see there is a light that is taking place as uh, in every place where we have gone, pastors have been repenting to one another and asking for forgiveness. You know, especially some pastors that had churches that look successful, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the younger pastors and so on felt that maybe they were not respecting them. And then they, the ones who had ministries that looked to be so small, uh, I mean, I, there is no small ministry, growing ministries felt that they were jealousy of the others. So God has released the grace, but it has been because of obedience. People of God, I want to take a moment right now uh, to pray with you, you know, to pray that the Lord will again baptize us in the spirit of repentance. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we have seen many miracles. When you look at that video, there are miracles, short legs growing, uh, deaf ears, people, you know, 
God has been doing miracles and wonders, but it all began from the point of obedience. And uh, it, is, it is now becoming a blessing. Father, I want everybody to just lift up your hands and pray with me. Just repeat this. Prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before your presence. I humble myself. We repent for our pride. We repent, Lord, forgive us for pride. We humble ourselves, oh Father, for not wanted us to be Christ, the Son of the Living God. Lord, work in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we arise to take hold of you. We take hold of the promises. You have spoken about the nation of Malaysia. And you have said that there is a revival that is going to break out, oh my God. I pray for us, firing, oh my Father. firing of your people. My God. Masanti the God that says that you're going to pour out your spirit on the nation. Oh my God. Pray. Release your fire. Release your breath. Release your fire. Release a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Let your fire fall, oh my God. Let your fire fall, oh my God. Let your fire fall, oh my God. Masanda la masanda bagadi, barosa kata la masanda bakasa kete, barosa kata la masanda bareka bose kete, barosa kata la masanda bagadi bagadi bagadi, barosa kata la masanda I pray for everybody. Lift up your hands, everybody. Just stand. Let us pray together. I wanted to just call upon the fire three times. Three times. Everybody say, Fire! 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 Now open your mouth and stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up yourself. We pray for the Malaysian firewall. We stand up yourself. Stand up yourself. Stand up yourself. Ramasandia. Basaka Brikatosa. Marakataya Bakoseke Brikatosa Mania. Let your power fall. Let your fire fall. Makasa Kayaraba Zandia Bakotai. Basaka Taraba Zandia. Barosa Kotoro Bosandia Bagaria. Ramakotai. I pray for your servants, sir. I pray for the intercessors, sir. I pray for the pastors, oh my God. I pray for an outpouring. I pray for supernatural hunger. I release the grace of prayer, the one that you spoke about and you said you released it. Every grace of prayer. Makatania Bakoto Bosandia Bakato. Ramato Zakataya Kataya. Barosa Kutala Basandia Bagaria. Barosa Katala Basandia Bagaria. Barosa Kotola Bosania Bagaria. Barosa Kotola Bosania Bagaria. Barosa Kotola Bosania Bagaria. Barosa Kotola Bosania Persia Katai. And Father, in the name of Jesus, right now I pray for the sick. If you're sick, touch where you have the sickness. I bind somebody you're having neck issues, neck issues, neck issues. I break somebody you're having shingles, something called shingles, shingles. Shingles, 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 shingles. I break every power of darkness. I break every affliction. I break every sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Masani ya makose kete ya mando za kuta la bazania. Ramakose kete ya mandia makataya. Somebody you've been having pains in both of your both of your shoulders. Makosa that you cannot even lift them up well. I bind right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ the son of the living God. Masantala makoto la bazania bagaria. Ramaseke brekato. Ramakosa kota yantuya. Mando Shante Mekanto Zamania Bagaria, Ramaseke Brekatoza. I bind, I break, I break, I break affliction in the lower disc of your back right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody you've been feeling like the lower part of your body is so heavy, it's so heavy that it is a demon, it is a spirit. You are feeling so heavy right here from the, the west going down. You've been feeling a heaviness there. I bind that spirit, break it, and I command it. To lose your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Lord, I release, I release your fire. I release the fire of God. Gastric, I break it. I crush it. I crush gastric, bloated stomach. I bind in Jesus' name. I stop it right now. Makosha kubre kato zamania bagaria, bareka baseke bre kato zamania bagaria bagaria. Ramasia katoza. I break the spirit of depression. I bind it. Makosa ka you've had it for the last twelve years. I rebuke it. I break it. I crush it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I thank you. I thank you for every sickness that I've not mentioned. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume every sickness. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume every sickness. And right now we pray for the entire nation of Malaysia, the 14 states, we release your fire. We release an outpouring upon every altar. Let every altar become alive with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it spread. Even as we are in the season of Pentecost, in this season of Pentecost, Makosako brekatoza, Ramanea kasia katunda la bagado zakuta la bazania bagaria, Rema sinda makoto la bazania bagaria, Rako seketea, Mando shamakata, Zakobo, let young men in their twenties, young ladies in their thirties, young people in their teenage years arise and take hold of the Lord's promises in the mighty name of Jesus, Christ the Son of the Living God. Father, thank you for all the pastors that are serving on the Malaysian uh, firewall, I also pray for grace. I pray for grace to lead intercession, to lead prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.